Now, with respect to the life of Abraham, we can describe this connection in this way. We find the connection of historical backgrounds when Moses pointed to the ways in which Israel's experiences were historically rooted in the events of Abraham's life. Take, for instance, the way Moses explained the historical background of viewing the land of Canaan as Israel's homeland. You'll recall that a number of times during the Exodus, the Israelites wondered why they had to go all the way to the land of Canaan. Why would Moses not allow them to stop short of entering that land? On a number of occasions, Moses addressed this very issue by providing certain details about the historical background of Abraham's life. In a word, he showed that God had specifically given Abraham a homeland in Canaan so that the Israelites could see why he insisted that they too had a homeland in Canaan. For instance, we read these words that God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, verse 18. To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. This passage established the origin or historical background of Moses' insistence that Israel possess Canaan. God had given that land to Israel's great father, and he had given it to them as his descendants, so settling in some other land would not do. As we explore more details of Abraham's life, we'll see that Moses frequently pointed to these kinds of historical backgrounds. A second main way that Moses connected the life of Abraham to Israel in his day was by providing them with models. Let's see how modeling worked in these stories. Moses did not want his original readers to receive the stories of Abraham as mere background information. He described many situations in the patriarch's life so that they could see a significant number of similarities between the circumstances of Abraham's life and their own circumstances. These similarities raised moral issues for Abraham's audience. Moses pointed out that these similarities made it possible for Israel to see examples, to follow, and to reject. Telling stories for the sake of providing models or examples is a common way to connect stories to their listeners. It happens all the time. When we warn someone at work not to do this or not to do that, we often add a story about what happened the last time someone made that mistake. If we're teaching children why they should work hard in school, we often reinforce instruction with stories that give examples of people who have great success because they worked hard in school. Moses often did the same thing to connect his stories about Abraham to his original Israelite audience. He presented Abraham's stories so that his characters could serve as models for Israel to follow or to reject. Consider, for instance, how Moses exhorted the Israelites to boldness against the threat of the Canaanites who occupied the land of Canaan. We know from the books of Numbers and Deuteronomy that the Israelites following Moses refused to enter Canaan because powerful Canaanites occupied the land. Their hearts were full of dread because the Canaanites seemed to be an invincible foe. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, we read these words of Moses to the tribes of Israel. But you were unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, The Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go? Our brothers have made us lose heart. They say the people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large with walls up to the sky. One of the ways Moses addressed this fear of the Canaanites was to provide his readers with the example of Abraham facing Canaanites in his day. For instance, we find the first reference to Canaanites in Abraham's life in Genesis chapter 12, verse 6. 
Abraham traveled through the land. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. And in a similar way, in Genesis chapter 13, verse 7, we read these words. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. Why did Moses mention the Canaanites' presence in the land of promise twice in two adjacent episodes? One of his purposes was to show Israel that Abraham's situation was very similar to theirs. Canaanites were in the promised land in Abraham's day, just as they were in the days of Moses and Israel. Yet, Abraham believed the promises of God and went forward boldly into the land occupied by Canaanites. In this way, Moses encouraged his readers to imitate Abraham's boldness by trusting the promises of God and by going into the land even though Canaanites still occupied it. In this way, Abraham became their example to follow.